Welcome to the Profit Talks podcast, hosted by the Orange County Inland Empire SBDC Network, funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration and the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. This show is the go-to resource for business owners seeking empowerment, education, and resources to succeed. Join us as we connect you with experts, share the triumphs of fellow entrepreneurs, and reveal the wealth of assistance available to you today to level up your business. So let's go. Let's dive in and learn more. Welcome back to Profit Talks, everybody here today. That last line, the wealth of resources available to small businesses just like yours, that's what we're going to focus on today with the woman who made it happen. Uh, an amazing program you may or may not know even exists that's available to you, to you today to sell your small products online. Let's talk to the woman who put it together for the SBDC. Her name is Sherry Edelson. Did I say that right? Ed Edelson. Like Edelson. Eddie. There you go. Yep. Edel I always want to say Edelweiss, like Edelson or something. <laughs> Watch too many Sound of Music movies. Okay. Uh, so, Sherry, um, you have an amazing... <laughs> Almost like it just, uh, uh, do you ever think like it was meant to be? I mean, you just serve at the right place at the right time and everything here. Um, give us some background on who you are. First of all, amazing that you met your husband in Spain when he was in the service, I guess, or something. That, that's not something I wrote across every day here. Yeah, I did. I, I believe a lot in uh, things meant to be and in, in the happenstance of life. Yeah. Yeah. So you met him uh, in Spain. What, what branch of the service was he in or what was he doing? He was in the Navy. He had some really awesome tours. He spent uh, his first one in Greece. Then he got Spain, then San Diego. So he got all the lucky cards. Okay, some good ones there. All right, so yeah. you followed him along. You've been in San Diego here. You've been in all these places. Now you guys moved back to raise your family. Was this where you were from, Iowa? I'm from Iowa, born and raised, one of 12 kids. So another. Uh, That's the Iowa story. One of 12 kids. We all got to work the farm here or something. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't grow up on a farm, though. So we're, we're one of the few. Yeah. <laughs> one of the few, right? Well, that's farm country back there. That's uh, corn as high as an elephant's eye or whatever they say back there. Yeah. And it knee goes. Knee high by 4th of July. <laughs> knee high by 4th of July. There you go. So you came back to Iowa. And why not just, you know, get a job? Why be an entrepreneur in Iowa? Somehow we don't think, we think entrepreneurs are big city uh, folks that, uh, and I, I, I say that, I don't want to offend you or offend anybody in small towns, but somehow we don't think of small towns as entrepreneurial centers here. You did come back to a small town and you did create an entrepreneurial career here. Talk about that. Yeah. So to be honest, I don't think I really knew what an entrepreneur was growing up. I know there's entrepreneurial programs that exist in universities now. I think one was starting up when I was in at UNI, the University of Northern Iowa. I didn't know a lot about it. I thought it was like a business school or, or you yeah. know, something in that regard. Um, but I graduated with Leisure, Youth, and Human Services and a degree in Spanish. Not sure what I was going to do with those in the middle <laughs> Go to Spain, though. That was the obvious reason to go to Spain. I, I, <laughs> hey, that, that Spanish degree led me to Spain. So that's right. where I met my husband. Um, yeah. And so I, I started working for that program that I went through overseas with. So we went and worked with military kids on military bases overseas and provided summer camp programs. And so I worked full time for them back at the office at a university and into, I knew I wanted four kids. So it was at my second child when you start to look at you like, Hey, if I want four of these, I've got to, you know, cut my losses somewhere. You can't put them all day. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't afford it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Afford it. And I was a child care, you know, like that was, I loved, I loved kids. So at two, we cut our losses and I started to stay at home and it was about six months in where I realized like, Ooh, I like being a mom and I love it. Don't get me wrong, but I can't, I was failing every day. If you look at like, I was a high achiever before yeah. and then now like my house was never clean. I couldn't have the dishes done. Dinner wasn't done on time, you know, all of the things. And so I was like, I need something else too. And so around that time it was early 2012 i want to say i found pinterest and i think it, it might have already existed before then but i just happened upon it you know the to, site uh, where people put up pictures of things and it, and it's definitely loaded with fashion and with uh home goods mostly fashion kind of stuff it seems like but in early 2012 ish there was a lot of like diy like how to repurpose furniture yeah. and how to make the craft and a lot of baking and, and cooking and so um, one of the, the crafts, the I whole, the whole so-called makers movement here, makers movement. Yeah, it definitely was a part of that. Um, now, yeah, there's those Pinterest shops and things that pop up that are fully just for makers, right? Uh, people who make things, the they make cute little plants or they make, uh, embroidered things or they make, uh, clothing or furniture or something. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. So I, I found hair bows was one of the things. Hair I had just bows. Two the first thing that would come to my mind here, hair bows, right? <laughs> I know. I had never thought about hair bows before, and I only had, I had two boys, so I didn't need to make hair bows. I don't know why. I just started making them. I mean, when you think business, you think hair bows. I mean, that's just... <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, gosh, is the... Uh, the oh, those... Uh, uh, that well, I forget the show, with Penny um, and the... Never mind. Okay. There's One a, of those Disney shows or something? Bow, yeah. The hair bow business of the, uh, gosh, I will, I'll have, I haven't seen the episode myself, so I can't even bring it up, but there's a whole episode dedicated to Penny making hair bows and she gets overwhelmed with orders. Oh, I think I did. Oddly enough, Mike, because I have a daughter and she watches those kind of shows. And this was a few years ago, I think. There's, it was. Yeah. It was a few it's years It's like back. Um, Raven or something. Uh, one of those. Uh, it's one with the the guys who are all like nerdy guys, and she's the normal. Uh, one. You just described every show on uh, Nickelodeon here. <laughs> um, I'll give you an interesting thing. I'm, I'm making fun of you here, but I did some work yeah. years ago. Yeah. With a client, a woman, same story, staying at home mom, got to do something, need a little money, need some more sanity, need a little more. I love my kids, but I can't, I'm just not geared. I have a business mind. I want to find something. I want to make something. I want to do something. And she started making a thing that you could put beads on your hair. Like when you make little, what do you call it? Like the, yeah. I don't know how you make a string of hair and then you, and then you put all the beads. She had this little wand that she figured out and it would slip the beads up in your hair. And she got it to Alicia Keys, the singer, oh who at that time was young and starting. And mm -hmm. she wore these beads and it, the business took off. She had it in Walmarts and all sorts of other oh crazy stuff here. That's it was wild. Uh, 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 this, what to me seemed like the silliest. I didn't think there was a business for that. Mm -hmm. and, but she found a niche. She kind of came up with a, a, a thing that made it easier. She got it to an influencer, a celebrity, a singer. And she started wearing these and it just took off. So I, exactly. who am I to say what's a business and what's not a business anymore here? All right. So you're making hair bows, selling them yep. on Pinterest. I got that far here. And this is okay. You're making money. You're doing something with this here. So, yeah, I started I started making them. I wasn't even sure I was trying to be a business. I started putting my neighbor kids and my sister's kids. Of and course. then people started requesting, like, hey, could you make one for this Easter outfit? Could you do one for this? And so I was like, okay. Were you good at I making like, things? Were you this? Is this what you were I known for? Crafty. Yeah, okay. I remember repurposing a college or a shelf in college. And this was before, like, it was trendy. I don't, and, you know, I think back and I was like, I guess I always was kind of crafty. Yeah. I never thought about it that way. Well, I think it's very crafty, like crafty, like a fox to come up with a niche like this to figure it out. How, just two seconds, how did, did that just pop into your head one night or did you go research it and try and think of, because as you said, you weren't making these for your boys. So what led you to this aha moment when you saw the opportunity here? I had a dream. There was one dream. You had a I, dream. Of course you did. I know. <laughs> I, I, was, I hated the Pinterest site. I couldn't figure it out. But one night I had a dream and it just like flooded Pinterest and like hair bows were in my dream. I don't know. It was nonstop. And so then I started researching like how to start a business because I didn't know what I was doing. I had just, you know, worked for a company in San Diego and one here in Iowa. And um, so I Googled how to start a business. I got an LLC online. My husband was a web developer at the time, so he he built me a website. So mm -hmm. I had a real business name. I had a website built. Got a, che a checking account. And, and like, did he right, think this was a business? Was he excited? Like, oh, this will just keep her happy here, you know? I think he was kind of like appeasing me. Like I needed something else, and I was having a lot of fun. And I, gosh, when I think the first time I went to the store, I spent maybe like a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars on like ribbon and supplies and all these things. And we were a young family. I don't. I, I probably bought it on the credit card at the time. Let's see. Should we buy uh, some shoes this week? Let's go buy some hair ribbons. Yeah. Right. I know. Uh, it was an addiction at first. I don't know. I just kept. I was like, look at this cute one. Look at this cute one. You know, it was just you could. When you are crafty, you're just surprised at some of the things that you do. Make they have sometimes. the stores like Michael's out here, which is a chain. I don't know if that's a nationwide chain where you can go in and get all the beads, and then they have tons of crafty things to make stuff. All the little. Yes. The things. So then I'd add little things in the middle and you can make some, you know, school hair bow ribbons that had little crayons in the middle and you make your Easter ones and just, I could theme them to all of them. So that's when I found out about the farmer's market in my town and I signed up for that. I, I didn't sign up in the beginning, so I didn't have a regular stall. So I got kind of filled in when there was somebody was missing. Little it's table, you sit out there, people come through and you sell some of this stuff and you see how people react. I thought I had tons of stuff. I was like, oh gosh, my tent's going to be stacked out. I got there and it was like, I look back at pictures now and it looks like there's only 12 items. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hair bows don't take up a lot of space. Yeah, you're not selling uh, pumpkins or something. You got a lot of big. Yeah. All and right. So $200 that first day. And I was like, oh my gosh, $200? people want what I have to offer. Like this, this is a, this, I'm rocking and rolling. This yeah. is a thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So 
fast forward a little bit, you decided to join some sort of, you're going to get serious about this. You seem like a serious person here. You're not just, oh, let's play with this for a little while. My mother used to do She'd play with something for a little while, then she'd try this, and she'd try painting or something. She was always the suburban housewife looking for some other fulfillment, creative thing to do. But it was always just, I don't know. It, it never went anywhere. She didn't think of it as a business. You're thinking of this as a business, and you thought, I'm going to get serious about this. And you said, I'm going to take this. I'm going to go, what, to a startup accelerator? So no, the hair bow business, it, it was about a year in, Amazon had contacted me. Uh, and I'm wow. like, I'm just a stay-at-home mom in Iowa. And they said, hey, they wanted to give me a shop on Amazon. They want to put my stuff on there. I think I got a free month or something. Yeah. Um, and at first I didn't respond because my husband said, you know, these are scammers, don't respond. And then, <laughs> yeah, I can't be real. Amazon doesn't call up uh, somebody no. making hair bows at their house here. Yeah. Come on. No. So then uh, about two weeks passed and they wrote again. They said, hey, we, we want to get your stuff on Amazon. They re and so I looked up and I Googled the people and I was like, okay, I think this is real. And so they got all of my stuff on there. And I think that first day in or in next day, I got started getting an order. And I was like, oh, gosh, like this is a thing. So I had my website and I was doing school cheer bow orders and, uh, you know, some stuff on that way. School and then I cheer bows. There's a whole there's a whole nother niche I didn't know. Cheer bows for the cheer squad. Oh, yes. Yeah. Cheer Squad, I got them in the school stores. I had some in a retail store outlets. I had Look at you. Um, a whole, you know, like I'd give the order form. You know, when you go to order like t-shirts from school with your kids' logo. Yeah. And that, I, it was a whole bow order form. You could get any kind of <laughs> bows and dog bandanas and, you know. Dog bandanas, another one here. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So this is starting to grow. This is a business. Amazon, uh, school, uh, neighbors, uh, l showing up at the farmer's market. Okay. Keep yep. going. Well, how did you get to the accelerator? I did a little craft fair in Iowa, a uh, winter snowy day, and it was supposed to be for kids to buy presents for their siblings. So everything had to be like five or $10 um, un or under. And no, I been to them. We used to do them at the school. Yeah. You'd come down, the kids would buy these little things and then they'd wrap yep. them up and give them to mom and dad and little things somebody made, I don't know, a wallet or something here, yeah. And so every farmer's market that you do or these craft fairs, you're making up a ton of stuff ahead of time. I had a bunch of stuff left over, so I didn't invest a whole lot in this because I had some of my things. But everybody else, you know, you you spend time making stuff for shows yeah. because you want to sell it. If you don't have enough stuff, it's going to be not that great of a market. So, uh, and you can't before, run out when you're there. You can't go, oops, I wish I had 40 more yeah. of these or 20 more of these. So yeah. you tend to overbuild, right? Yeah. So I set up the night before all the other vendors set up their stuff and then you go home and then the next morning you, you go over to the show and it snowed like 12 inches or something that night, just a, it's, a ton. It's and you've Iowa. Got to drive in the snow. It's yes. Iowa. <laughs> yes. It snows in Iowa. And when it snows, they're pretty hardy. They'll go out, but not if it snows 12 inches. No, that's, that's, it, you're done. It wasn't worth it, you know, so by later on in the day, but this was, I think it started at 9 a.m. and went till 1 and so I got out of my driveway. I went there, but the whole three, I think three hours into the, it was a four hour market. Nobody came. Like one person came through the door and they related to somebody there at the, the thing. So right. I called my husband and I said, put the boots on the kids. We're going to shop from these businesses. And so we went around to all the other individual tables and we thought, oh my gosh, this person is really cool. Look at this cool product they made. Look at this. And and you didn't know that they existed unless you came to this little winter exactly. craft fair. They're all in their house somewhere. Yeah. Yep. So we left and thought, is there a way we can help? And I was already selling, I was doing good. I was selling my stuff on Amazon. I had my other, you know, outlets that I was doing. And my husband was a web developer. And we thought, could there be a way that we could help do this? So we Is built this a business? third business in this regard. And he was yeah. still working full time, had a side business in web design. I had my hair bows. And then we thought, we'll start this other thing and see if we can help people sell online together. So he built the first marketplace website. And I started teaching businesses how to sell online and what goes into your photos and your product descriptions and how to SEO. Because you're the and, expert. You're on Amazon. Yeah. And I had learned a lot and I had learned how to edit, you know, like even like Photoshop and all of those other things I never learned before. I was, you know, I was experienced in that. So I, we started helping them and we did that for about a year. Do you know how this then, amazing this is? Oh, I just, I'm going to, I get a dream. I get a dream and I'm going to make hair bows. And then I start selling a few of the friends and family and then the school and then a little thing. And then I go to a craft, another total happenstance, and it's a bust. And out of that, you see the birth of a whole bigger business. Why don't we come, why don't we bring them all together in these little rooms and wondering if people are going to show up? Why don't we do this online? And I'll help them all do this online. I'll make a business of doing this. Online. I'll create these member marketplaces. That's the name of your business, right? Member marketplaces here. Okay. You you just, yeah. this is like, you're, you're acting like, well, this is just the normal progression of things, isn't it? I, I get a dream. I do this. I go someplace. It's a bus. I come up with a new business idea. Let's do this. 
yeah, it's like, uh, let's just go make a movie, kids. Okay, fine. And uh, pretty soon we're doing it. Uh, uh, I don't even know what to say. All right, so now you were they receptive to that? Were people interested in that? We're like, uh, yeah. It, it took a little bit. We were trying, I mean, you have to figure out a whole new business model. What are you charging the businesses and where are you pulling fees? So we tested out a few things in that first year. Some people could choose a commission only. Some people chose a monthly fee. And then, and then uh, you know, more than anything, we did a lot of stuff for free, just trying to throw darts and see what sticks. Um, but after that, that first year, I'm like, okay, I think this could work. And then somebody had said, hey, do you know about these people in your community who are doing a startup accelerator? And I was like, I I don't know them. She's like, you should go meet them. So I went to an open coffee and said, hey, this is what we're doing. They're like, hey, a startup start accelerator. Yeah, these are usually people. Sometimes they're angel investors. Sometimes they're VCs. Sometimes they're organizations. But they're there to supercharge your startup and see if they can take it to the next level, see if they can make it really fly because too many of these, too many of these things never fly anywhere. I mean, come on, That we all have a dream. We all have an idea. That would be really cool. Very few people see that dream through to fruition here. Yeah. I mean, it has to do with your own expertise, your time, your talent, and then budget and stuff. So they usually give you a little bit of... Uh, and belief and somebody else to show you the way. What did you know about building an online marketplace? You don't have a degree no. in online marketing here. No. And then we were, and so instead of going out directly to businesses, we didn't want to be the next Amazon or Etsy. So we knew that outright. Um, but we knew there was all of these farmers markets and these towns and businesses. A lot right. of them belong to a chamber of commerce or they're affiliated with the city in some regard. How do we help them localize together, make your own local marketplace? And Many of the cities, well, at least they do here in Southern California, the city themselves shuts down the main street and they sell mm -hmm booths and they don't do it necessarily as a money maker they do it as a way of promoting local businesses these are people that come out have unique flowers they're growing at home or plants i've seen those are or unusual uh, clothing that they're making or importing or something they've got fascinating things at these kind of makers markets there have been several of them out here and i think there was one in dana point not long ago if you know where that is up here and yep. And I was amazed. Who are all these people making all this stuff here? But if I didn't show up at that event, I wouldn't know they exist. And I don't know where they go next. I don't know yeah. the circuit. I don't know where they show up next. They probably don't know where they show up next. And for cities and communities, I think some of these farmers markets, and so that's kind of where this California shop small, we'll get into it, but I think investing in these very small micro entrepreneurs, yeah. these are the ones who may take their business and start another business. You know, like I, I use my like business you did. as an example three or four friends that started out at farmer's markets and now own multiple retail shops that now own multiple different plants that have taken that first original business and turned it into something else. And so right. I think you're investing in the entrepreneur in these early markets that is going to then continue to invest in your community. And as you said, it's a micro investment. It doesn't, this isn't a big major investment. You're not giving them millions of dollars or something to do. You're giving them a little boost for a business that may stay little or may grow into something big. Okay. So, all right. So online marketplace again, just comes to you. Ta-da. The light shines. I want to walk around you and just see when the light shines over you next time here. Oh, tell me. I see a light bulb over your head. Something's happening again here. So you start this marketplace, take a little while to get going. And this is in Iowa, right? So you're doing this there. You're, you go to this um, startup accelerator and you met who? Who'd you meet at this thing? So uh, my very first day, I sat down next to a guy and he introduced himself and said, hey, I'm Scott and I'm with the SBDC. And I said, well, nice to meet you, Scott. What's the SBDC? 50, 50 people <laughs> and, you could sit next to that day. You sat next to him. Okay. I did. Yeah. Um, one of the nicest guys still, you know, anytime I have any big milestones or champions, I still want to tell him because he's he's been a big cheerleader from the beginning. But again, right place, right time, total happenstance. You just met somebody and he's with the SBDC and the SBDC has branches in Iowa, just like they do here in Southern California. You said they got six or eight or 10 or 12 and they got a whole bunch of them around the state here. Yep, and so he's one of the regional directors and I told him about what we were doing and he had already learned a little bit about us. So I think he'd actually come to like specifically sit down by me or I said ah, by him. Ah, okay, he had no like Amazon, he's seeking you out, okay. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think I can help you out. And I was like, well, well, tell me more. Like, what what do I need to know? And so we set up a meeting. I went and talked to them, you know, more in depth about what we're doing. He really liked the application and, and where this could go and saw the need to help businesses. And so he's like, I think I've got some clients I could refer to you that could use your help. I think there's yeah. possibly some communities that I could tell you, you know, about or have you get Chamber into Chamber of Commerce, cities, yeah, type of stuff, right. And then also he's like, I could probably help you out. So I've like, got some marketing consultants and things that can help you out. So he gave me a little bit of like seed 
SPDC money and paired me up with one of his marketing consultants. And so we sat down and tested some brand messaging and imagery and some of those things and put them out on the websites and just worked through some marketing. And he got me a little bit of accounting help in the beginning as well. And so helped me set up my uh, first accounting partner and getting my QuickBooks online. And beyond that, he introduced you to some other regional SBDCs, like the one here in Southern California and apparently yeah. the one in Northern California. Yeah, he had me come to an SBDC meeting where I met Lisa, who's our state director, uh -huh. and um, it, it was during the pandemic. So she, I had known her for about a year, and then during the pandemic, when all of the retailers, you know, across the U.S. were shut down, um, the state of Iowa had contacted me and said, "Hey, can we do a whole state of Iowa marketplace?" The so, state of Iowa contacted you. All right, this is just getting more and more amazing. People are finding you. This is you, yeah. most of us are struggling to get heard and get found. People are found finding you from. Uh, Amazon to the SBDC to the state of Iowa here. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So we won a, a, a nationwide RFP to be able to build a shop Iowa marketplace. And then from that, um, Lisa is connected to all of the other statewide directors and had introduced us or mentioned us to um, the SBDC in California. And so we had contacted them. He said, I had heard about this. So we set up a call with Mike Daniel and talked about this. And he yeah. said, I think this is really cool. This is something we want to get involved with. So they, we started with Orange County and Lynn Empire first, and they worked on, we started CaliforniaShopSmall.com and we were helping to get very brand new micro entrepreneurs online together through a six week cohort process. Right. California Shop Small program, California Shop Small program. Check it out. Okay. So well, how does it work? It's a free resource for six months. You give them a listing? Do you help them take photos and write product descriptions and teach them how to deliver this and, and fulfill the orders and stuff? It's more than just putting a picture on a page. Oh, yeah. What's really unique about the California program and, and different than how we do it in any other community or state is it's partnered with the SBDC, the most uh, partnership where they've got kind of full access into the uh, training and resources and everything into the back end of the marketplace. The SBDC uh, trainers will run the, run the cohort program on that side. They will help you get your business into the platform first. You become an SBDC client. Um, and they start with, in the back end of our stuff, we have everything broken out. We've got knowledge base, videos, tutorials, resources to help you. You could go and kind of self-guide and then use our team as needed, where they've taken all of our resources that we have and broke it down like but even finer. So that first week, you're learning just about how to, what is selling online? What can that do for your business? What is the California Shop Small platform? Um, online tools for you. Then it gets into managing your inventory, taking pictures. Yeah. What goes into a product description? How do you write a product title? Then it goes into setting up your inventory and starting to add your first product. So they really micro break down all of those individual steps. And how to get to it to people, how to fulfill all this stuff here and do all that. Yeah. And it's a six month program. Then what happens after the six months? Then they so have... it's a six week um, cohort program, and then they get six months for free to sell on the California Shop Small platform. And then it's up to them. Maybe they're launched and they're ready to go. Some businesses have maybe closed down in that six months, or they were just trying it out. And then some business can continue to stay on, and it's ten dollars a month or a hundred bucks a year just to have a, oh a shop goodness. on the platform. So they don't have to build a website. They don't have to go through all of these other pieces. But when they do go to build a website and their business is taking off, they now have all the basic fundamentals of what goes into product descriptions, how to take good photos, um, how to SEO their items, how to build their you know their their shop yeah and is this based on like a shop i tell me everybody says shopify is a big platform or something is this sort of like shopify or is this based on shopify or is this something we, similar to yeah, we built through a lot of the we've looked through a lot of the resources that small business are utilizing and we refined it so we made it very simple for people who have never sold online before it's a, a, a micro process it's really simple for them to get online I call it like driving a car. If you've driven a car ever before, you know, the gear shift might be on one side, you right. turn the wipers on a different spot, but overall it's the same. So it's it's really refined in that regard. Um, but how we have built some of the things, marry Shopify, and we do actually sync and integrate with Shopify and Square. So if somebody does eventually go to build their own online store, we can import their products, sync them into the platform and make it super easy for them to sell. And Square is where you, what, uh, collect the money? So we actually cl collect it through Stripe. Um, okay. Stripe, we can pay businesses out through Stripe or PayPal. Okay. And so it starts with this cohort. Everything's, I love this term cohort. Uh, the old ancient Roman legions were cohorts. You know, everything in tech is a cohort. It's not just a group of people. So you create this cohort. It's a six week program, start to cart. What a cool name. From start of an idea to a cart that's actually up in six weeks, you're gonna get my hair bow business or whatever I've dream, dreamed up here. 
um, you're going to get it online on this program. And then you give me six months free, and it's up to me if I want to pay to stay on the platform. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, am I amazed? Yes. Uh, I'm not even sure what to ask about. How long ago did this start and how far is, how's it going so far? So California Shot Small started in 2021. So we're just going into the third year right now. Um, so it started out with just Orange County Inland Empire that first year. And then the second year also brought on NorCal. So they're running multiple different cohorts in Orange County area and now also up in the NorCal district as well. Um, usually there's a big one happening always during the fall season. So right now we have, gosh, I don't even know the number. I didn't look it up ahead of time, but dozens of businesses ready to launch on Small Business Saturday. So they're just get finishing up their storefronts. They're yeah, that's coming up. up soon, I think. I don't know when Store Business Saturday is. We're recording Saturday. this. This Saturday? Yep. Okay, so no right after Thanksgiving here, the Saturday after yeah. Thanksgiving, the day after Black Friday here, when everybody's online shopping. Yeah. So if you go to CaliforniaShopSmall.com on Black Friday, uh, or even after, if you're catching this afterwards, but go there, we will have coupons and promotions for you to be able to shop from any of the businesses on there, but especially the brand new businesses that are just launching on the site and incentivize people to shop local. So there's resources that help uh, the community to discover them, incentivize them to buy from them. And then how we have it set up is that's part of the marketing dollars that then come out of the contract. It doesn't even come out of the commission of the businesses in that regard too. I gotta go check this out because I know that such a thing exists. I haven't really investigated it. I love the idea of buying local. I love the idea of buying these little cool crafty things like you'd get on Etsy or you see on uh, um, uh, Pinterest or Instagram, other things. Some of them, well, give me, I, I'm not even going to guess. What are they? Are they food related? Are they clothing? Yeah. Are they okay. something else they're making? Give me some ideas of what's on the site here. Uh, there's a ton of candles and not just candles. Like there's a bunch of different scents, but there's some really funny candles, some uh, <laughs> a little bit inappropriate candles on there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That candle in that regard. Uh, but yeah, there's clothing too. So it doesn't have to just be handmade. There's clothing businesses. There's a lot of like drinkware and barware and celebration. Oh, there's, there you go. I'm Irish. Um, I like that. All right. Yeah. You yeah, have bath and body products. There's, uh, it's really kind of the whole gamut. Home decor. I think we say apparel and accessories down to like toys and toys anything and that really sticks out that's a one of a kind. You go, wow, you just got to go see this. The coolest thing. They make, uh, I don't know, uh, some kind of strange salsa or they make some kind of strange musical instrument or something. I don't know, anything really bizarre in there or I guess I have to go look. I don't know about really bizarre, but we do have, yeah, we've got some uh, ukuleles. Ukulele, okay, that's pretty you bizarre. Can get, you can get like the newer beginner ukulele or you can get like the pro ukulele on there as well. So it runs the whole gamut. Um, Honest yeah, to God, I tried to, I bought a ukulele at, at the local music store yeah. and I thought that was going to be my COVID project and my hand, I'm six four, my oh. hands are just too big for this little toy guitar here. And I've just been frustrated to heck. And, and I, you know, I, I need somebody to show me how to do this, but ukuleles. Yeah. That's, I thought there's like four strings. How tough can it be here? I didn't, it was yeah. like too small for me to handle even, but ukuleles, there you go. I'm just kidding. But you, you hit my hot button there. I bought a ukulele. So weird stuff, wacky stuff, fun stuff, cool stuff, um, useful stuff, uh, everything from hair bows to ukuleles. It sounds like you're going to find There is them. a hair bow vendor on there as well. Of course, yeah, so has to be. Yeah. To my heart, her, her on board. <laughs> the coolest factor I would say though is when you're buying on Amazon or some of these other you know shops, you you're not really sure who's selling it to no. you. We want you to get to know the business behind the products. So Many of them overseas, one. and there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, I I don't know. I'm not supporting local. I'm not buying local. That's the whole appeal of going to farmers markets and stuff mm -hmm. here. Um, it, it's 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 Main Street. It's my street. It's my town. And, and there's an yeah. You get to know them. You get to hear their story. You get to follow their social media pages. So on the other sites, it's kind of hoarded, like this is only Amazon and this is our stuff and this is where you're going. We want you to go visit their social media page. If they have a website, go there and discover more products. We really want to create that connection to those local businesses and help you identify with them. And then my sister actually lives out in Los Angeles and has ordered a few times through California Shop Small. And on her latest order, she contacted me and she said, hey, do you make the small businesses send a handwritten card in every single order? And I said, no, we don't. But that's the magic of ordering from a small business. Yeah. Like every order really does matter. These are real people and every order matters. It matters to them. They have a pride, they have a connection. It's not just fulfilling something that you need a box of tissues or something here. That's yeah. what Amazon's great at, bulk stuff, Costco kind of stuff. Just get it in bulk and get it direct, direct to your house. 
What a cool idea. Um, California Shop Small. Is there a website? Is that what it is? California Shop Small dot something? Dot com. Yep. Dot com. California Shop Small dot com. And, and can I just type that in or do I have to go to one of the SVDC websites? Nope. You could just type that in. And for any brand new business who's saying, hey, this is really something I could utilize, there's a sell section on there where you can register and we'll, we'll get you introduced to the next cohorts that are starting up in your communities. Uh, you make you it sound so easy. I'm going to go home and dream really hard tonight here. <laughs> I want some, speak to me, to, the, the great shopping gods here or something. Uh, heaven, I'm a good Irish Catholic. Give me a little inspiration, God here. Should, give me a little nudge, whisper in my ear over here. What, sh, what could I make? What should I make? Wouldn't we all love to have a little side gig like that, a little business that you had I fun doing? So. Yeah. Thank you. In there. I think that would be cool. And then you don't just do this for the SBDC. This business sounds like it's grown much bigger than that. Member marketplace. If if a local town, if a local uh, chamber of commerce, if somebody hears this and wants to investigate taking it into their network, into their town, into their community, how do they reach you? MemberMarketplaceInc.com. Uh, and my contact information is on there. And yeah, we do this for, we can build a marketplace to support your your businesses and your members. So how we do it in California might look a little bit different than how we do it in Nevada or somewhere in Iowa. It's, it's Iowa, really yeah. It's got to have corn in it if it's in Iowa here. It's got, no, I don't know. <laughs> I kid, but yes, I have lots of relatives back there, mostly in Minnesota, which is the next state over there. And it, uh, it, 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 it warms my heart to think that there are little entrepreneurs making stuff all over the world, all over the country. We tend to think of this as a movement that mostly happens in big cities around big campuses. Kids are being taught entrepreneurship. Program. Like here, I'm at the University of California, Irvine. They have a big entrepreneurship program. Um, uh, Cal State Fullerton does, several do. Um, never did when I was a kid. There was, you were just trying to get out and get a job. There was never a yeah. thing about making a job or making anything. Uh, that was pretty strange, but now it's pretty normal. And as you said, all those sites out there, uh, there are places that you can publicize this and promote this beyond just being on the shop. You can get on Pinterest, you can get on Instagram, you can do videos on YouTube, you could do all sorts of other things to promote this and build a following. And it doesn't have to be that you can't go to the local farmer's market if you still want. This is just yes and. It's, it's in addition to all the other things you do, right? That's what I always say. I add on another channel if you can. If you can. So even if it, if your social media and you only have a Facebook page, add on an Instagram or a TikTok or whatever when you can. If you have a marketplace website, when you're able to expand and then add on your own website, then add on another market. You know, like figure out how to add when when you've got to that stable place. Where do you grow from there? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because as I said, it's not just one and done. It's yes and as they always say. Yes, I'll do this and I'll do something else here. Well, Sherry. Let me see if I can say it right again here. Like Eddie Edelson? Yes. Sherry Edelson from Member Marketplace Inc. who went from a dream to a reality. What an amazing journey uh, over and over again. It just seems like, is this the way your life just goes? These, it's just the universe just guides you, God just guides you, something when the, they just, one opportunity presents or do you, you must have to be present and be aware of these things. Most people get up and they can't even remember what their dreams were. I like to think so. I'm a good Irish Catholic girl. Are you? Too. Okay. Well, then I knew there was oh, a connection my, here. My maiden name. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your vision with us today here. And uh, I hope you come back and uh, keep us updated as to the progresses. Go check it out this Saturday. Any specials for this Saturday? If it's Small Business sure. Saturday, there must be some other things going on the day after There's Thanksgiving. There's going to be 30% off site-wide on Small Business Saturday through Cyber Monday. So it'll go the whole kind of weekend through Cyber Monday. And then there's a couple of chances to win $100 gift cards at the California Shop Small Platform oh, as well. Oh, man. I'm going on it as soon as we hang up here. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us, um, uh, Sherry. And best of luck. I, I, it looks, sounds like you got the luck of the Irish here. You don't even need it. Just the way you just keep stumbling upon opportunity. I'll study Spanish. That takes me to Spain. And I meet my husband. I'll go to a, a, a lousy event and I'll walk around and rather than go home frustrated, I'll see another opportunity. I'll take lemons and turn it into lemonade here. Uh, amazing opportunities here all around us. I, it's makes me think, what am I missing as I'm walking around here? I'm certainly missing all those deals, so I'm going to go check those out. Thanks so much for uh, talking to us here today. Thanks, Paul.
As we conclude another episode of the Profit Talks podcast, we hope we've empowered your entrepreneurial spirit. Reach out to us to connect with our experts and let's take your business to the next level. Keep those dreams alive, keep pushing forward and stay tuned for more. And if you liked what you heard in today's podcast and you want your want your want your business to reach new heights, just contact us at profittalkspodcast.org or call us at 1-800-616-7232. That's 1-800-616-7232. So until next time, keep thriving.